Welcome back to another how-to video. I'm George Merchant, the owner of ECS, and I'm here to show you about proximity sensors today. What we're going to work on, you guys are out there probably seen plenty of them. It's probably why you're looking them up. How to test this bad boy, how to know whether it's good or bad, uh, how it usually fails, and how it works in the system. I'll make this video pretty short. It's uh, get straight to the point. Uh, proximer, proximity sensor. Uh, say that three times real fast. What it does, uh, there's different types. There's capacitive, magnetic, and uh, several others. And what it does is it, it senses for material passing in front of it. They, they come where they have different throw distances, different uh, sensing distances, basically. And uh, they come in different uh, shapes and sizes. Um, this is your typical barrel type, barrel type M8 plug style. You guys will see a whole lot of these out there. This is probably one of my favorite types right here. And it's straightforward and very um, to the point here. So when you, if you're wondering if one of these have gone bad, um, it's the same with a photo eye and so many other things. Um, what you're going to do is you're just going to test for power and signal. That's really all you have to test for. So if it's a 24 volt DC or 120 volt AC, turn your meter to the proper setting, all right? And you're just going to test for power and you're going to test to see if you're getting the signal back. But it's important that you're on the proper reference when you're testing the signal back. So we'll go over that shortly. So let me go ahead and switch to this screen real fast. So there's two different types. There's a PNP and an NPN. I have another video. I'll try to put a link at the end on uh, one of the end cards so that uh, you guys can click on it if you want to. And it, it describes and goes over the difference. But the big thing to remember here is basically it matters what your reference is. So in this case right here, um, in a PNP, the negative is my reference. In an NPN, the positive is my reference. The easy way to remember that is the middle letter tells you P for positive, N for negative. That's not what PNP or NPN stands for, but it makes it easy to kind of remember. So N negative, P positive, that's my reference, okay? And uh, if you recall, if you looked at the uh, other videos, my reference is basically where one of my two uh, leads go to and my other one goes to whatever I'm testing. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and we'll switch over to our trainer right here. And what we would do in this case is we would test for power. So I've got a proc switch right here, okay? And I've got my multimeter. I'll just bring it into the, to the mix here. And all I would be doing is turning that on to DC voltage. Okay, and the first thing I want to do is make sure that it has power. And I've got my white cable right here. I see blue and brown. I, I test its power. Okay, blue and brown. All right, I've got 24 volts. It's got power going to it. But my signal coming back, and I can see that's my other uh, wire right there. I've got my signal coming back. Is it coming on? Okay, and in this case right here, I already know that I'm dealing with a PNP, so negative is my reference, and okay, I don't have anything coming back, okay? So let me do something to flag that guy. There we go, if you guys can see it. I'm, I'm using the, I'm actually using the magnet of my meter to see nothing, and then, boop, there we go. I got 23.3, not quite 24. You're always gonna have a slight voltage drop across any of these sensors okay and if it was bad when i flagged the eye you know i got a buddy that's on the other end of the machine tell him to pass something in front of it whatever it needs to trigger i would i would want to see that changing state i want to see it changing state and i, I want to also see that it's not getting stuck because it might change state one time and then when he takes it away it might just it might just stay on so that's very important to remember when you're doing this. Guys, that is how to troubleshoot a proximity sensor. That's, that's it, man. Uh, you just you have three wires. We'll just kind of review that real fast. Such a short video. Three wires, right? That's, that's your typical. There are some that just have two, but you would test it the same way. You would just have it on reference, and then you'd see that that signal changed state. But... Here we go, it's just three wires, you got your power wires, and then you've got your signal, okay? What that box represents is, is, is your load, 
whatever load you're going to. A PLC input can be a load. It is a load, electrically speaking. That's it, guys. That's it. That's all there is to it. Power and signal. Make sure you're on the right reference. Reference, reference, reference. If you've been to any one of my classes, you'll hear me say that. So many times you'll be sick of it. But guys, that's it. That's all for uh, this video today. Uh, it didn't really have to be very long. Please check out some of my other videos. Pre please like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps to, to get these videos out there. And uh, it also helps uh, our business to be able to kind of promote our training that uh, we like to do. So I do uh, on-site training. That's what the trainers were built for. I also do uh, boot camps where we have a, a, a whole set of upstairs where you go through different scenarios. It's all hands-on training. And uh, you, get to, you get to mess with everything in an automation system from A to Z and uh, get to troubleshoot real problems and uh, walk through all that with the instruction. These are small classes. I don't put more than seven people in them at a time because I want to make sure that the uh, quality is there. So thank you. And again, please like and subscribe and uh, check out my other videos. Thank you very much.